Hello everyone, I hope you're all well and having a really fun time at home and just to let you know that I'm missing you lots and thinking of you and I can't wait to see all of you again back at Hillside. Bye! Hello everybody, Milo just wanted to come and say hi as well because she's loving the lockdown with all the attention she's getting. I'm not enjoying the lockdown because I am missing you all so very much. But please keep safe and remember I love you lots. Bye. Hello everyone. I hope you're having a lovely Sunday so far. Just a quick hello and I wanted to send a message saying well, well done. We're still in lockdown. And it's not easy, it's never been done before, but we are all doing the best that we can. Just remember to be kind to yourself, be kind to your family, and when days are getting tough, just take one day at a time and remember that Daddy God is always with us. Okay, lots and lots of love. Bye-bye. Hello boys and girls. I hope you've all had a wonderful week. I've been thinking about all you Hillside children that are doing online schooling at the moment. I think that your teachers are so clever and super cool to be teaching you like this. It's almost like having them in your house. So when you think about your teachers, what sort of things do they do for you? They teach you new things. They show you how to do things. They talk to you. And most of all, they care for you. Do you know who the most incredible teacher is of all time? Yes, it's Jesus. And when Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God. Do you know that people used to follow him and sit and listen to his teachings? In fact, there was once a crowd that was so huge, there were five thousand people and they followed and they listened to Jesus. In fact, there's a wonderful story in the Bible about this. Kath, we've spoken about this story so many times. Please can you read it for us today? The feeding of 5,000. There was once 5,000 tired and hungry and probably very grumpy people sitting on a hillside waiting for their dinner. They'd come to hear Jesus that day. They'd come before breakfast. They'd stayed all morning, all afternoon, and way past dinner time. No one had meant to be out there for that long. But that's how it is when you're listening to Jesus. It's as if time doesn't exist. People could listen to Jesus for hours, and on that particular day, that's just what they did. But they hadn't bought enough food. And they couldn't just go and buy themselves a burger and chips because, of course, they were in the middle of nowhere and there were no shops or restaurants nearby. In fact, in those days, that type of food hadn't even been invented yet. What would they do? Jesus' friends had an idea. Let's just send everybody home for dinner, they said. They don't need to go, Jesus said. You can give them something to eat. Did Jesus want them to travel all the way to town and buy food for everyone? Jesus' friends began to panic. We don't have enough money for that. What food do you have, Jesus asked. Go and see. Now there was a little boy in the crowd, and he bought lunch that his mom had packed for him that morning. He looked at his five loaves and his two fish. It wasn't much. It definitely wasn't enough for 5,000, he thought. But it was what he had. I have some, he said. Jesus' friends laughed when they saw the little lunch. That's not nearly enough, they said. But they were wrong. Jesus knew it didn't matter how much the little boy had. God would make it enough, more than enough. Jesus said, bring me what you have. And so the little boy gave Jesus his lunch. Jesus winked at the little boy and whispered in his ear, watch. How in the world would Jesus feed everyone with just that, Jesus' friends said, because they thought that this was impossible. But Jesus knew the one who made all the fish in the ocean. He knew the one who in the very beginning had made everything out of nothing at all. How hard would something like this be for someone like that? 
Jesus took the little boy's lunch. He looked up to heaven and he thanked his father. Then Jesus gave the lunch back to his friends. As Jesus' friends started to hand out the food, do you know what? It was the strangest thing. No matter how much they broke off, there was always more and more and more. Enough for 5,000 people. Everybody ate as much as they wanted. Some had seconds and thirds and even fourths until they were full. And still, there were even leftovers. Well, Jesus did many miracles like this. Things people thought could never happen. Things that weren't even natural. But it was the most natural thing in all the world. It's what God has been doing from the beginning, of course. He takes nothing and he makes it everything. He takes emptiness and fills it up. He even takes darkness and turns it to light. The end. Thank you, Auntie Kath. That was an incredible miracle. And you know, that story shows me that if we allow God to get his hands on our stuff, he can give us an abundance of blessings, an explosion of blessings. So this story is also teaching us that God is our provider. He provides for us. What does that mean? It means that God gives us everything we need plus more. Just like he provided for the crowd of 5,000. He didn't just feed them what they needed. They all ate until they were full and there were leftovers. 12 baskets to be exact. I love how this story shows Jesus' heart towards us. In fact, let's go and have a look at the story in the Bible. So if you have your Bibles with you, if you can turn to the book of Mark, and Mark is in the New Testament, we're going to go to Mark chapter 8, and we're looking at verse 2 to 3. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. I feel sorry for these people because they have been with me for three days and now have nothing to eat. If I send them home without feeding them, they will faint as they go because some of them have come a long way. So kids, can you see how Jesus cared for them? He was so concerned that they hadn't eaten. That just shows how much he loved them and how much he loves us. As much as he cared for them back then, he cares for us exactly the same today. So Jesus multiplied that food, which means that he made more and more and more of it. I wonder what that must have looked like. Can you imagine being there? Well, I've got an idea. Why don't we do a little activity to help us understand this better? Hello girls. Hello mom. Hello everyone. Thank you for being with me again today. So what have you brought with you? I brought some paper. And you, Liz? I brought a pair of scissors. Awesome. So kids, all we need for today is a piece of paper and a pair of scissors. So Molly, how many corners does this piece of paper have? Four. That is right. It has four corners. So what if I needed to give somebody one of these corners? Let's say I'm going to give this corner to you, Molly. How many corners do we have now, Liz? Five. We have five corners. So you see, the more times Jesus divided the bread and the fish, the more food he had to give everyone. So now we have five corners, and here on this piece, we have another three corners. And look, if I cut it again, now we have whoop, six corners. And the more I cut the paper, look here, the more corners we're going to have. Just like Jesus multiplying the fish and the bread. Can you see? It just keeps going and going and going. Can you see that, girls? Yeah. Hey, lots of corners for everybody. So that gives us a little bit of a picture of how Jesus multiplied the fish and the loaves for everybody to share. Yeah. Isn't that an incredible story? Yeah. And don't you love that it was a little boy, that Jesus used a little boy for the story? It wasn't a grown-up 
who was fancy or who had lots of things. It was just a little boy with his lunch. And God can do something with something little that you have too. So thank you, my girls, for coming to help mommy today. It's a pleasure. So kids, Jesus can take what we have and turn it into marvelous things to bless others through us. Do you remember learning about faith? Well, when God takes our faith and his power and he puts it together, he creates amazing things. And God wants you to know that he can provide for us in every way, even when it may not seem possible to us. Let's have a look and see what he says in the Bible about this. So if you can grab your Bibles, we're going to turn to the book of Philippians, which is in the New Testament. And we are going to chapter 4, and we are looking at verse 19. And with all his abundant wealth through Christ Jesus, my God will supply all your needs. It says it right there, that God will supply all our needs. Today, we have our precious Granny D to pray for us. Thank you, Granny D. Praying is very important because that's a time we communicate, that means talk, to Jesus. Prayer is also a way to build our faith. So let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your compassionate heart. You care for us all the time. We know this because we can read how you cared and fed 5,000 hungry people who'd been listening to your teachings for three days. Father God, we think of all the ways you provide for us. Even during this lockdown time, we know and feel your amazing love for us. We can count the blessings you pour down. Please fill us and our families with your love, joy and peace. We ask in your precious name that you keep us safe. Amen. Thank you, Granny D, And thank you, amazing children, for being with us today. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. And please, 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 we would love to hear from you on our class WhatsApp groups. Please keep us posted on how you're doing. If you've done the object lesson, or if you have a story to tell us, or more importantly, we would love to hear a testimony of how God has provided for you through lockdown. Have a great week, everyone. Lots of love.